This parasite is here to control the minds of its insect victims, with some species turning their hosts into real-life zombies. Once it's taken over, this fungus can turn a formerly dedicated member of the colony into an unwilling Trojan horse. These terrifying brainwashers are cordyceps. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Flora Logic. Today we're talking about cordyceps, a not so fun guy. At least not if you ask its helpless, mind-controlled victims. Cordyceps are a genus of over 500 parasitic fungi and can be found around the world, but are most predominant in warm, high-humidity climates in Asia. Their spores enter their victims, insects and arthropods, and set up shop immediately. If bugs could scream, it would be too late. Some species of cordyceps use their power of mind control to turn their hosts into walking zombies hell-bent on doing their bidding. Nope, this isn't science fiction, it's science scary. But lucky for us humans, these type of mind controllers only prey on people in sci-fi movies and video games. Some of their closely related fungi cousins, the Ophiocordyceps, take it a step further. For Ophiocordyceps hosts, the relationship with their parasite couldn't be more toxic. As one species, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, slowly takes over, it instructs the ant to act natural, tricking its colony mates into thinking everything's all right. That's the fungus equivalent of nothing to see here. When it's ready to spread, the cordyceps then compels the ant to climb up tall vegetation and give the north side of a twig or leaf a final bite, locking its jaw in a death grip. From here, the fruiting body of the fungus also called the stromata, sprouts from the back of the dead ant's head and begins sprinkling the forest floor and the ant's colony mates below with even more zombifying spores. And so, the freaky cycle of mind control continues. The shape of these fruiting bodies is where cordyceps gets its Latin-rooted name. Cord, meaning club, and seps, meaning head. While most species of cordyceps prey on insects and spiders, in one study, 20 of them were found to attack heart's truffles, another type of fungi. The ancestors of these fungi parasites were parasites of cicada nymphs, which live in the same environments as heart's truffles. It was just a matter of time before they evolved to exploit this new resource. Adding parasitic cannibal to its list of descriptors definitely gives cordyceps a leg up in the world's most terrifying fungus contest. And these fungi have been contestants for a long, long time. Marks on fossilized leaves suggest that their mind control behavior may have evolved as much as 48 million years ago. Newer research is starting to change how we understand the zombification process. And we might need to find a better word for it. Scientists notice that ants' brains are left mostly unaffected, but tissue around the body is often replaced by the fungus mycelia. This means that the fungus might actually not take over the mind, but rather the body of the ant, and forces it to move against the ant's will. They might not be making zombies, they're making live puppets. In turn, humans have been using cordyceps for medicinal purposes for ages. For thousands of years, cordyceps have been used in Chinese and Tibetan traditional medicine. Ophiocordyceps sinensis, for example, is a medicinal species that sprouts exclusively from the head of ghost moth caterpillars and is only found at high altitudes in the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. Because of its rarity, it's prized as one of the most valuable ingredients in these medicinal traditions. Instead of zombies, this cordyceps took a page from a different horror novel and turns its victims into mummies. The resulting fungi host complex is then used for a variety of ailments like asthma and respiratory inflammation. Overharvesting of this species has put it on the endangered species list in China. Ophiocordyceps militaris, which is much easier to grow commercially, is often used as a cheaper alternative. One thing's for sure, mind control is not one of the side effects of cordyceps. At least not outside of science fiction. Humans are also finding ways to put cordyceps to good use outside of medicine. Currently, cordyceps are being investigated as eco-friendly pest killers for a variety of invasive baddies. So in a way, cordyceps are basically Dexter. Citrus crops, for example, are attacked by citrus leaf miners. While these pests have traditionally been effectively managed with the application of synthetic insecticides, the flip side is that these same chemicals have a big negative impact on predators and other insects. A lack of predators means it's basically open season for other harmful pests 
to come to the citrus feast. Introducing Cordyceps javanica, which parasitizes leaf miners, to the citrus battlefield is one way researchers are combating these pests naturally. In the fight against coconut root grub, which attacked the roots of coconut and other crops, spraying the ground with insecticides isn't a healthy option for anyone. So scientists are investigating species like Cordyceps militaris that naturally prey on these grubs to control their populations. From parasitic killer to medicinal healer, Cordyceps really do have so many layers. But are they layers of a parfait or layers of an onion? I'll let you be the judge. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Bye. The shape of these fruiting bodies, fruiting bodies, delicious. The shape of these fruiting bodies, ah! okay, hold on. The shape of these fruiting bodies, ah! it's like I'm going to puberty. Okay, hold on. Oh, the shape of this fruiting body. <laughs> their spores enter their victim's booty holes.